What's up friend? As you likely know, PA is reworking the first 17 classes to be more on par with the recent releases and last week we got the first iteration of the Sork reboot. I'm gonna go over every change and give you my overall first impressions at the end of the video. For easy navigation, I'm gonna split everything with timestamps so you can just skip to whatever is of interest to you. By the way, I'm using the translated patch notes from Black Desert Foundry, so big shout out to Tanzi for translating everything on the day that these patch notes come out. Alright, let's talk about the skills. Black Wave range has been increased and in theory it should float in both Absolute Version and Prime. Currently it only works on Succession and to be honest I don't know if this is intended or a bug. In theory, according to the patch notes, it should float on Pre-Awakening too. This is actually a pretty cool change, I've been a fan of Black Wave and in its current state it's uh, completely useless, unless you play Succession of course. The skill locks you in place and it's pretty slow and telegraphed and having a float on it feels fair and I don't think this is that big of a buff, but hopefully it gives us a few more ways of punishing mid-range openings or follow-up CCs. They removed low kick and scattering shadow and reworked Shadow Riot to be a completely different skill. Now, this is probably my biggest issue with the entire rework. Their reasoning for removing the skills was that most players lock them. And this is a bit triggering, because the good players end up suffering from the lack of skill of the bad players. Every single Sork that can be considered good made plenty of use of both low kick and scattering shadow, and removing them straight up takes away depth from our kit. Most importantly, these two skills don't really get replaced properly by anything, so there's just a hole left in there. Shadow Riot is also very questionable. It's what can be called a block jump, but it's strictly worse than every block jump skill currently in the game. It's slow, fully unprotected and currently a bit buggy. The only use I can see for this skill is to follow up a resisted KD with a float by using Shadow Eruption right after. But at that point, the entire flashiness and blinking behind your target is completely useless and it's just there to add an extra chance of you the sinking around. My personal feedback for this skill would be either give it frontal guard to the first part of the skill so that you can utilize it as a counter to frontal blocks, or alternatively, just speed up the animation by quite a lot so you just not a free kill as soon as you use it. They removed some passive from the skill tree and moved them to other skills. One of the best changes was adding Shield of Darkness, the Shift Q self DP buff, to Dark Trade. They moved the Accuracy self buff from Scattering Shadow to Shadow Eruption, which I suppose is a buff since we do use Shadow Eruption a lot more. And um, they added a way to cast Dream of Doom with right click, so that it's a lot harder to misclick a Stinger out of it, for example. Oh, and they also lowered the cooldown of Imminent Doom and Bloody Calamari, which is pretty nice. A decent change to our mobility was adding an actual iframe to our jump iframe, which is very nice, since I don't have to say jump iframe in brackets anymore. The downside is that the repetitive casts won't be iframes while in the air, which I think is currently bugged on global by the way. Frontal Guard was added at the start of Abyssal Blow, which is a completely useless change in my opinion. Engulfing Shadow is one of the most important skills in our kit, and I don't see ourselves not using it anytime soon. If they want to give Rabam's diversity, then they need to give them more substantial changes. In the chance that PA is actually watching this video, my suggestions are extra range and lower cooldown on Crow Nightmare, more damage on Abyssal Flow, and extra range and lower cooldown on Shadow Wave. Dark Backstep now has a frontal guard, and while this is a nice little buff, I still think that this could be a bit more, maybe? My suggestion would be giving extra range to the skill to help with the Sork mobility issues. Sense of Agony projectile speed and overall animation has sped up, which is a very good change overall, no complaints here. And using a Darkness release forward outside of cooldown has extra range, which again is just a nice change. Let's move to Succession. Keep in mind that I haven't played Succession in a long, long time, and I don't feel qualified to give a proper opinion on this one. I'm not so sure what Succession actually needs, but these changes are probably not enough to bring it on pair with Awakening. The range of Dark Flame is now bigger and the damage has been increased for PvE. Violation PvE crit rate now applies in PvP as well. 
Close of Darkness now has a different input, forward LMB instead of S LMB. And now in succession has extra range, air attack, a float, and a down smash at the end. Close has been a meme skill for a long time, and these changes actually sound pretty nice. Protected CC, air attack, down smash, that's pretty hot. As I said earlier, Black Wave now floats, and on succession it also deals more damage. Bloody Calamari has a lower cooldown and can be chained after violation, turnback slash, midnight stinger, and ultimate dark flame. Oh, and turnback slash now has an extra hit. Alright, now for Awakening. This is where the most amount of changes were made. Rushing Crow now has a frontal guard, and this is, in my opinion, one of the biggest changes to the kit. Having a mobility skill that you can use from both pre-awakening and awakening with a frontal and low cooldown is massive. I can see this being used on cooldown in most situations and the fact that they removed the bound, it's actually a buff to the skill. Karsha Nightmare now is extended with shift T instead of space and we can dash left and right twice by consuming shards. I actually laughed when I saw this one because it sounded like a massive buff to what is arguably one of the strongest skills in our kit but after playing with it a bit, I realized it's quite useless. The wind-up animation is too long, so you likely just lose damage by doing this. And the dash being a super armor makes it completely useless, since you still will get grabbed out of it. Overall, this changes almost nothing on how we use Karshen. It's a small buff in the case we need to do a 180 degree turn while using the skill. Ultimate Shadow Eruption cooldown has been reduced, Again, just a nice buff that realistically doesn't change too much about our gameplay. Soul Harvest has been completely reworked. It now activates with Shift Q, it has a 7 second cooldown instead of 3 seconds, and deals a lot more damage. Has a down smash and gives us a 40% crit buff on cast. I have mixed feelings on this change overall. The last thing we needed was an extra combo skill. This one ends up being effectively a worse version than Soul Reaper, and it dumps down Sork combos even more. I honestly don't think this was a good change at all, as it adds absolutely nothing to the kit. My personal suggestion would be removing any form of CC from the skill, and give it either a frontal block or a super armor, and uh, give it flat block damage, which would be a massive help to the current kit of the class. Next, they straight up buffed the damage of Grim Reaper, Dead Hunt, and Turnback Slash. Can't really complain on this one, obviously. Both TBS and Soul Reaper also creates 10 shards on hit, which I actually don't like, but I'll go more in depth about it at the end. Shadow Leap doesn't consume shards to sell buff anymore, and that mechanic has been moved to Grim Reaper Judgment. This might be a buff overall, but I personally don't really care. Casting Karshan Protection, aka the block, now chunks. The skill damage multiplier was 437 per 1 before, and now it's uh, 1337 per 3, which is quite hilarious. Killing people with the block somehow feels wrong, and I don't fully understand this change, but whatever. Val plan damage was also buffed, and I think this was another missed opportunity to add something unique to the kit, like the damage on block that I mentioned earlier, or maybe knockdown resistance debuff, like the one from Awakening Sage. And last but not least, Awakening iframe cooldown has been removed, which honestly doesn't change too much since we were able to play around it before by cancelling Absolute Darkness. If anything, this dumps down the class a little bit, and I suppose it's a nice buff to Grim Reaper Judgment. There's a few current bugs, but I'm not gonna go over those as I'm sure they've been reported already and are going to be fixed soon. My overall impressions of the rework is that both Succession and Awakening receive some good and substantial buffs, but sadly, not the ones that I feel like we wanted for the class. Let me explain what I mean here. There's different ways of going about this buff to the class. Probably one of the intention was to make the class more accessible and easier, and I think in doing so they made the class perhaps a bit more boring to play. I really don't like how they completely removed the need of managing shards. For example, casting the blade doesn't consume shards anymore, not sure if that's a bug or not. Having awakening skills that give shards and removing the cost of shards from a few things just made the mechanic completely useless. Maybe now the class is a bit easier to play, but overall I really like the playstyle of going into pre-awakening to generate shards and using them for big damage on awakening skills. And I guess another thing to talk about is, what is the purpose of the rework? Do you want to make Sork stronger in what it currently does? 
or do you want to give the class tools to deal against what she currently struggles with? If the aim of Pearl Abyss is to make Sorok stronger at what it does, then I think they made a pretty good job overall. There's a misconception that Sorok doesn't do damage, which I think is completely wrong. Sorok has a lot of damage. We just struggle to put ourselves into the position of doing said damage because of the lack of mobility. So adding extra damage to our skills doesn't change too much. I mean, yeah, we're gonna do more damage, but we're gonna still struggle to output said damage. But let's say they want to give Sorok tools to deal with the things she struggles currently. I would say Sorok now has three major weaknesses. One is the mobility. Probably we are one of the slowest class in the game, which you could argue that is fair because we have a lot of iframes. So maybe that's fair that we are not able to follow up against uh, every other class. But it's still an issue that makes playing Sorok frustrating in PvP. The second one is obviously the Adamantine meta and the CC resistance meta. Sorok being a class without grab, and don't get me wrong, I don't want the class to get a grab, I just want to get this out there. I do want the class though to be able to play without needing a grab. Whenever we land a CC, and most of our CCs are also KDs, most of the time we end up struggling because everyone is running at the mountains this day. And Sorok relies a lot, a lot on bounds and KDs. Honestly, this could be its own video, I don't want to talk too much about it in this video. But yeah, having a KD penetration buff or something like that would be actually amazing. And the last issue that I personally think Sark has is dealing against the classes that have uh, essay blocks and can usually just do nothing, just sit in block, wait for the Sark to use all of their resources and then follow up with something. That is, as I said, very frustrating to deal with and probably a solution for this would be adding flat block damage to the kit somehow. These are examples on, in my opinion, on what could be added to the class to make it less frustrating to play in today's meta. But as I said initially, if the intention was to just buff what was already strong, then this is pretty good overall. And I want to give Succession a small shout out. As I said, I don't play Succession anymore, but from asking people that do, they feel like Succession just did not receive enough love, especially compared to Awakening and other reworks. Sadly, I don't feel like I know what Succession needs, so maybe if you guys have any ideas about it, write it down in the comments and let me know what you would like to see change from Succession. Anyways, these are just my first impressions. I will be testing more in the upcoming days, as PA already said that we are getting an extra skill in the kit, and also they are always improving and changing these reboots every single week. If you want to see me testing live, check out the stream, link in the description, and if you want to join me in the tests, but you are from EU, you can use Surfshark to create an account and support my content. Good hidden for 83% off and 3 months for free. Thanks for watching until the end. Kisses.